Hi, my name is Rebecca with College Bound Review. I tutor both the SAT and ACT exams. Today we're going to look at part of the science section, which is one of the key differences between the two exams. The ACT exam is different from the SAT exam in many ways. One of them is that it has a science section. Uh, the science section is 35 minutes long, has 40 questions, and that's broken down between seven different passages, each with five to six questions. And so today, this lesson is giving you um, an example of one of the passages that you would encounter in the science section and how to approach the passage, look at the data they provide and answer the questions that accompany it. So here we have um, a typical passage that you can expect to see. It starts with some text, not too much, a couple paragraphs, and then figures that accompany the text. So here we have one, two figures. There's a couple more sections. A third figure and then one, two, three, four. This section has five questions that go along with it. So one of the first things to do when looking at these passages is not to jump straight to the questions, but to get some background on what this section's about. Because the questions can be confusing and can get frustrating if you have no clue the terms that are being used in this section. It is really important to point out that you're not expected to know anything the questions ask before entering this exam. Even though you do a science background in school, you're not expected to be able to answer those questions um, without reading the text and um, looking at the figures. So don't become too overwhelmed if your science is not your strength in school. Everything in the questions should be able to be found in the passage. So let's get started. Uh, passage one. Over 100 wild horses inhabit the Shackleford Banks, an island off the coast of North Carolina. As the horses have no natural predators on the islands, the population must be managed to avoid uncontrolled growth. Overpopulation can have devastating impacts on the land with depleted vegetation and erosion. Herd size is controlled using a type of birth control. Okay. Certain females, mares, are given a fertility drunk, drug called porcine don't zone a PZP, to reduce the numbers of foals that are born. Figure one shows the relative success of the contraception. Okay, so figure one, we're dealing with the success of the contraception by comparing the number of foals birth per year to the group of mares that received PCP compared to the group that did not. Despite the success, there have been some unintended consequences of PCP that have raised concerns about the drug's use. Figure two shows the effect of PCP on the breeding season. So if the treatment is not 100% effective, mares give birth to foals later in the year. That's good to know. Which could be problematic. With no off-season recovery period, relatively cooler temperatures, and limited resources to feed off of, PZP could be negatively affecting the survival of recipient mares and their young. However, figure three shows that when successful, PZP mares are healthier year-round. Okay, so... There was not too much text. You can read it, skim read it briefly and get a sense for what the topic is about. Here we're introduced to a couple of terms we might not have known before. Um, mares being female horses and PZP being the drug used as a birth control. So the next one now look at the figures. And the key thing about the figures is just to see trends and get the main message. So here, figure one, we were already told that this is going to be about the success of the contraception. So you can see the axes of number of foals per year. So in 2010, this is how many foals were born to the group PZP. So these are the female horses that were given the drug. And these were the females that didn't receive the drug, so non recipients And overall, you can just see that over time, the females that received the drug gave birth to fewer foals, which was to be expected with birth control. So figure two, moving on. Here we have percent of mares falling over just the months of the year. So this is the breeding season. Uh, again, non-recipients in red here, so those are the female horses that didn't receive the birth control. They seem to peak and have their most foals around April and May. Um, those that received the drugs seem to have, the majority of those mares seem to have foals, if they do have foals, later in the year, so around August. Okay, let's now move to the second part. So here we have figure three, the third and final figure of this section. And it's two parts. So there's a table that gives us body condition scale and then um, a bar graph that shows us um, the breakdown during the year. So winter versus the rest of the year, spring, summer, and fall. 
again, between the two groups of mares that received the drug and those that didn't receive the drug. And we can see that um, there's a range from one to nine, where one to two is very thin, starving body condition, ranging all the way up to nine, which is obese, and then an optimum ideal body weight is around five to six. So here the takeaway is that the blue, so those horses that receive the drug, have a higher body condition both in the winter and during the rest of the year. Okay, so now that we've got an idea of all the figures and the background to this section, we can approach the questions and hopefully they won't be as confusing as they would have if we jumped straight to the questions. So, number one, according to figure three, which group of mares is the healthiest? So, every what's very typical in the science section is a lot of the questions will address certain figures, which is really helpful because if you skim the text and then approach the questions, um, you can jump and see exactly where you need to look. So here, figure three. Had we not just looked at figure three, we can now look at figure three, review it, and we're now saying which group is the healthiest. So... Based on the body condition scale, healthy is definitely around five to six. Um, and here, if we look at these charts, spring, summer, fall, the PZP, that is around six, which would be the healthiest in the body condition scale. So we can skim down all these answers. A, non-recipients in the winter. Non-recipients in the winter are two. That would be starving. That's not the healthiest out of these. PCP recipients winter, PCP recipients spring, summer, fall, and non recipients spring, summer, fall. So as I just said, the largest one here seems to be the PCP recipients in the spring, summer, fall. Those are the healthiest at six. So here, our answer would be C. Number two, based on the data presented in figures two and three, the managers should make which of the following conclusions about the overall effects of PCP? So again, this question directs us to figures two and three. So let's read through the answers. Breeding season length increased and body condition improved. Breeding season length decreased and body condition worsened. C, breeding season length increased and body condition worsened. And D, breeding season length decreased and body condition improved. So here's just a combination of two things, the breeding season length, which we know is in figure two, and body condition, which was shown in figure three. So let's look for the trends. Again, looking just at figure three because it's here. With PZP, right, we just established in question one that their condition definitely improves. So we know that we can get rid of answers B and C for that reason because the body condition improved and didn't worsen. So now we just need to check the breeding season length. So let's go back to the first part. Okay, so figure two here. Does the breeding season length increase or decrease for the PZP group? And so both groups start falling in February um, and the PCP doesn't stop until November, whereas the non-recipient group stops around September. So you can see that the, the breeding season length definitely increases for um, the horses with PCP. So here the answer is going to be A. Okay, question three. If each foal consumes 200 kilograms of vegetation per year, how much more vegetation was consumed by the foals born to the non-recipient mares and the PZP mares in 2015? Okay, so this question's a little bit more challenging as they don't direct us to a figure to look at, but we know we're dealing with number of foals born, which should remind us of figure one. So, we're looking here at the foals born to the non-recipient compared to the PCP in 2015. So again, let's go back and look at figure one. Um, 2015 is here. So we're going to look at the difference between the number of foals born. So there's that point there. We want to focus on this point here. Um, you can draw it back. You can see this is around 60 on this line here. And here we're between these two lines, so 10, 20, so you could estimate about 15. So we know we have 60 foals here born to the non-recipients and 15 foals that were born to the PCP group. So if each foal consumes 200 kilograms in a year, 
we're trying to work out how many how many more kilograms would be consumed by the foes of the non-recipients, the 60. So you could do this a couple of ways. You could either work out how much vegetation was consumed by these 60 foes and these 15 foes and do the difference, or you could start by taking the difference of the number of foes. So here, if we take the difference between the two, 60 minus 15, you're left with 45. So you know there's 45 foes. So if we now hop to the question. Um, so each foe consumes 200 kilograms of vegetation per year. So we know we have 45. Times 200. And so... 45 times 2 um, is 90, and then if it's 100, you can just add the two zeros. So here we go. 90 plus the two zeros, so you get 9,000. And so we're going to check the answers to see if anything matches up to that. And you can see here B, 9,000. So B is going to be our answer. Um, you're not given a calculator in the science section, but the math will be too challenging. Um, so just so you know. <laughs> okay, question four. Which three months of the year see the highest amounts of falling among both PZP and non recipient mares? Again, this question doesn't point us exactly to a figure, but by question four, we're pretty familiar with the breakdown of the figures, and we know figure two discusses the months of the year and the falling. So let's quickly go back to figure two. So we're looking for the months of the year that see the highest falling between both groups. So we're not just interested in the red or the blue, we're interested in both. And so right away you can see the peaks. There's one here. Here's another key peak for the PZP. And then the third highest peak is about here. And so let's look at those months. This is April, May, and August. So we can now go check and see if any of those answers match up to that. April, May, and August, and you'll see that D matches this. You can also just verify that and check the other months. So a bunch of these do have overlaps with April and August and May, but September and November are addressed a couple of times. And if you look at figure two, September and November are very low. September's reasonably high for PZP, but there's absolutely no falls in the non recipient. Okay, so now we're ready to move on to the final question, question five. Scientists administered PZP to a small group of mares before realizing that they had forgotten to identify the group. To establish which mares had received PZP out of the population, they tracked them for a year. Based on the data provided, which of the following horses would most likely be a recipient of PZP? Again, this question doesn't address a specific figure, but it tells us based on the information or based on the data provided which is a signal that you're probably going to be using a combination of all the figures. And so far we've seen a bunch of general trends. We know that the horses that receive PZP don't fall as much. Um, if they do, it's later in the year and they have improved body condition. So with that in mind, we can now look for the answers and see which one likely sounds like a horse that received the birth control. So A, an optimum mare that has one fall in August. So this is combining both body condition and the number of foals it gives birth to and the time of year. So an optimum mare, that sounds about right. We saw in figure three, if we go back to figure three, that the PZP horses definitely have the optimum condition rate, five to six, which you do not see in the non-recipients, which range from two to 3.5, which is the underweight starving condition. So, and has one foal in August. One foal, we want PCP to work and not have foals, but the fact that it has in August is definitely signifies um, a horse that would have PCP. Again, if we go back to figure two, you can see that P only the PCP horses really have any foals in August. So that sounds good. So A for part five could be a good answer. B, an underweight mare that loses even more weight during the winter. Again, we just actually looked at figure three and we know underweight is not typically a signal of the 
pause that has the birth control. Typically, the birth control improves that condition. So this is unlikely to be the answer for that reason. And C, a starving mother has no foals that year. This one's a little bit trickier. Starving, um, like we just said, is unlikely to be the horse that received the birth control. But the fact that it has no foals, that might be an indicator that it did have birth control, as we don't want them to have foals. That being said, maybe it didn't have foals because it had such a poor body condition. So this one is unlikely to be the correct answer based on the starving body condition. D, a mare that gives birth to twin foals in May. So part D doesn't have anything about the body condition, but it tells you it has twin foals in May. So here it has two offspring in May. And as we saw in figure two, May seems to be the peak foaling time for those that didn't receive the drug. And the fact that it had two babies is unlikely that it received the drug contraception. So here A is going to be our correct answer. The awesome mare that has one foal in August. Okay, so I hope that gave you a good um, outline for what to expect on the science section. A good example of a data representation passage, which is what we just did, where you've given some information on something, some research scientists are doing in the science field and some data that they've collected and then how to properly analyze it. So just to review some of the key things that we addressed was don't jump straight to the questions because sometimes it might be on a topic that you have no background in, such as PCP, and you might need some to review it um, to get some context. But once you have skimmed the reading and have looked over the figures briefly, you want to look for trends. And a bunch of the questions really do point towards those trends. Um, what's really helpful is a lot of the questions directly say, figure two or figure one, and you can then, before answering that question, double check and look specifically at that figure. An important thing to do is always make sure you um, correctly read the labels of the axes and the numbers, because it's very easy to make mistakes um, when you're doing math based on the numbers that you see. So I hope this was helpful. Um, good luck reviewing.